Do you need something? Truth be told, that was the plan. Sometimes I need to be alone. But I don't mind drinking with you, since you found me. Like a mere mortal. Is that what you mean? You would imagine it, but I have rough days too. Days when I prefer to hide from prying looks and just be alone. Unusual, but I'll get used to it. Oh, Fredro got what he wanted. A duel. I have nothing to regret. So, does it change anything? Did my sword arm fall off? Or all my fencing knowledge, did it fell out of my head? Oh no, our beautiful Valerie has stopped being such a beauty. Her wonderful face is ruined. It must mean there's something wrong with her. I have to say, I want to scream at everyone who keeps looking at me with terror and regret. Where has your adoration and veneration gone? Vanished with one swing of a sword. It would be strange to expect anything else from you. You, just like the rest of my admirers. Now consider me, how should I put it, damaged goods. Well, where are your compliments now? Do you like this, Valerie? What? But... Empty flattery, no doubt. But thank you anyway. I think I've had enough for today. Both wine and honesty. Please, don't worry about my ability to serve you. I vowed to fight shoulder to shoulder with you. And I'll not break it. and needs. You can write that down. Just imagine, the poor archer cursing like a sailor is trying to tear his quiver out of the kobold's mouth, while the kobold keeps chewing on it. I never knew those lizards had such powerful jaws. We could barely get the kobold off it later, even after it was already dead. That archer never forgave us for ruining his quiver, but it was quite a show. <sighs> I feel good with you. I can just be myself. Not pretend to be a lady and keep the proper distance all the time. I can't remember anyone else it's been so easy with. I do, though. There was someone. Of whom? Of a person in my distant past. His name was Toma. We met when we were clearing the poachers out of the Gronzy Forest. Truth be told, the work was thankless. The Crown pays the salary. 
and the locals think you're there to oppress them, so they love to make your life difficult. It's good to have partners nearby, someone who you're sure is on your side. Toma was a mercenary like me, and also from a rich family. A fifth heir who decided not to wait for his luck on the family estate. We understood each other better than the others. Toma never tried to deceive or flatter anyone. It was always direct and honest. Everything was direct and honest between us. We were together for a time, and then, when the circumstances changed, we went our separate ways. But we never regretted what happened between us. Lovers. That's an interesting word. It implies a certain kind of special relationship. If you mean love, no. There was only affection and trust between us. If you mean a physical connection, then yes. I had never imagined such a simple act of pleasure could so easily drive away needless thoughts and anxieties. Sometimes I think about how much you are like Toma. Not in appearance, not at all. I mean that being with you feels so easy. I trust you so much. want to get out of here. The entire palace is at our disposal. I expect we can find suitable accommodations. Although I wouldn't mind bearing my sword for such a luxurious sheath. <laughs> of course, such a pretty flower has already been picked, hasn't it? Who knows, who knows who will enjoy these plump buds in the future? <laughs> I assure you, your highness, it won't be you. Well, I have to go. If you need anything, talk to Nunzio Arpaia. He is my master of ceremonies, so he's responsible for organizing this mess. <laughs> have fun.
This is what perfection is worth. Her lies could never reach my heart. You must know this better than anyone. Always. I'm waiting for your signal, my king. Together to the end of the world. Remember? Has the imminence of the final battle made you a poet? I hope not. We will come back alive, you and I, and we'll be happy. If I like anything about ballads, it's a good ending. Now, let's see this story through. Every failure, every fallen comrade. But these regrets cannot undermine my spirit. We learn from our mistakes and harden for times like these. I'll follow you to hell and to the abyss. Lead us, my king. The king and Valerie stayed together, lovers and companions, bound not only by love, but by common duty. The amazing union underlies dozens of ballads and poems written by delighted subjects and echoed all throughout Avistan. There's more fiction than truth in those poems, of course. Our hero and his beloved keep their relationship well behind closed doors. The only thing kept in the Chronicles in the truest detail is the Grand Royal Wedding. Valerie became a worthy and honest ruler, like anyone doubted she would. And while their subjects can't wait for an heir, the beautiful royal couple seems to be in no hurry to continue their lineage.